Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the two books Focus Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, an exam oriented topic, the localization of sensory abnormalities. The localization of sensory abnormalities, concepts of sensory system part 7. Localization of sensory abnormalities. Sensory symptoms and signs can result from lesions at many different levels of the nervous system from the parietal cortex to the peripheral sensory receptor. Noting their distribution and nature is the most important way to localize their source. Nerve and root. If focal nerve trunk in focal nerve trunk lesions, sensory abnormalities are readily mapped and generally have discrete boundaries. Root or radicular lesions frequently are accompanied by deep aching pain along the course of the related nerve trunks. With polyneuropathies, sensory deficits are generally graded, distal and symmetric in distribution, that is stocking and glove sensory loss. Dysesthesias followed by numbness begin in the toes and ascend symmetrically. When dysesthesias have reached the knees, they usually have appeared in the fingertips. This process is nerve length dependent and the deficit is called as stocking glove sensory loss. Small fiber neuropathies. We have small fiber neuropathies and large fiber polyneuropathies. Now let's now first let's check out on the small fiber polyneuropathies. They are characterized by burning, painful dysesthesias with reduced pinprick and dermal sensation, but with sparing of proprioception, motor function, and deep tendon reflexes. Touch is involved variably when it is spared. The sensory pattern is referred to as exhibiting sensory dissociation. Sensory dissociation may also occur with spinal cord lesions. So, in, in small fiber polyneuropathies, it is the pain and temperature sensations which are affected. Large fiber neuropathies. Large fiber polyneuropathies are characterized by vibration and position sense deficits, imbalance, absent tendon reflexes and variable motor dysfunction but preservation of most cutaneous sensations. Dysesthesias, if present at all, tend to be tingling or band-like in quality. So, in large fiber polyneuropathies, vibration and position sense is affected, tendon reflexes are absent and there will be motor dysfunction. Sensory neuronopathy or ganglionopathy. It is characterized by widespread but asymmetric sensory loss occurring in a non-length dependent manner so that it may occur proximally or distally and in the arms, legs or both. Pain and numbness progresses to sensory ataxia and impairment of all sensory modalities over time. So, sensory attacks is one of the important manifestations of neuropathy or ganglionopathy. This condition is usually paraneoplastic or idiopathic in origin or related to autoimmune disease, particularly Jogren syndrome. So, the essential features of neuronopathy or ganglionopathy are that there is ataxia, sensory ataxia and that it is usually paraneoplastic. Spinal cord. If the spinal cord is transected, all sensation is lost below the level of transaction. Bladder and bowel function also are lost 
as is motor function. Lateral hemisection of the spinal cord, that is only when one half of the cord is affected, it produces brown sequard syndrome with absent and pain temperature sensation contralaterally because spinothalamic crosses over and loss of proprioceptive sensation that is posterior column and power that is corticospinal tract ipsilaterally below the lesion. The presence of upper motor neurons in support a central lesion, a hyperesthetic band on the trunk may suggest the level of involvement. A dissociated sensory loss can reflect spinothalamic tract involvement in the spinal cord, especially if the deficit is unilateral and has an upper level on the torso. Bilateral spinothalamic tract involvement occurs with lesions affecting the center of the spinal cord such as in syringomyelia because the spinal thalamic traverses the spinal cord and crosses. There is dissociated sensory loss with impairment of pinprick and temperature sensation because spinal thalamic tract is affected but with relative preservation of light touch position sense and vibration appreciation because posterior column is spared. Dysfunction of the posterior columns in the spinal cord or of the posterior root entry zone may lead to a band-like sensation around the trunk or a feeling of tight pressure in one or more limbs. Lehermet's sign. Flexion of the neck sometimes leads to an electric shock-like sensation that radiates down the back and into the legs. In patients with a cervical lesion affecting the posterior columns, such as from multiple sclerosis, cervical spondylosis or falling irradiation to the cervical region. Now let's talk about the brainstem and the localization of sensory abnormalities. Crossed patterns of sensory disturbances in which one side of the face and the opposite side of the body are affected localizes to the lateral medulla. Here a small lesion may damage both the ipsilateral descending trigeminal tract and the ascending spinothalamic fibers subserving the opposite arm, leg and hemitorso. Whereas a lesion in the tegmentum of the pons and midbrain where the lemniscal and spinothalamic tracts merge causes pan sensory loss contralaterally. So one side of the face and the other side of the body fit is affected, it localizes to the lateral medulla because ipsilateral descending trigeminal tract and ascending spinothalamic tracts are affected. Whereas at the level of the pons and midbrain, both posterior column and spinothalamic tracts have merged, so there is a pan-sensory loss contralaterally. Thalamus Hemisensory disturbance with tingling numbness from head to toe is often thalamic in origin but also can arise in the anterior parietal region. If abrupt in onset, the lesion is likely to be due to small stroke that is lacnar infarction, particularly if it is localized to the thalamus. We have another important syndrome in thalamus, the degeneron rossi syndrome. Occasionally with the lesions affecting the VPL nucleus or adjacent white matter, a syndrome of thalamic pain may ensure the persistent unrelenting unilateral pain often is described in dramatic terms. Cortex Finally, with the lesions of the parietal lobe involving either the cortex or subjacent white matter, the most prominent symptoms are contralateral hemineglect, hemi-inattention and a tendency not to use the affected hand and arm. On cortical sensory testing, abnormalities are often found but primary sensation is usually intact. So these are the wonderful concepts of sensory localization. The other important concepts of clinical neurology, I have put it in a book, Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology, written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas. This book contains all the essential information regarding clinical neurology and will be very useful for students appearing for the clinical neurology exams. The other book I have written is Focused Neurology, written by me, Dr. S. Srinivas. This book contains all the important concepts of neurology in a question and answer form. This book will be very useful for students appearing for VIVA or ORALS. This book is available on online from all leading booksellers including Amazon, 
So if interested, this book could be purchased online. I hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of sensory localization. If you have enjoyed it, please like and share the link. But please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Sinvas Medical Concepts and my B page, Dr. Sinvas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.